Back in the year in 2002, Capcom released the remake of the original Resident Evil. It was met with massive but unbridled praise, regarded as one of the best remakes and horror games of all time, for improving the gameplay, expanding upon the original story, and making the atmosphere much more menacing and sinister when compared to the original, released back in 1996. And after its release, Resident Evil fans were hungering for a remake of Resident Evil 2. And for 13 years, there was no sign of it until summer 2015 when Capcom officially announced that they were finally delivering on the remake of Resident Evil 2. However, shortly after, after the announcement, they went silent for three years, which led to us RE fans being skeptical if the game was actually being made or not. However, at E3 2018, Capcom came out with the first ever preview of the RE2 remake and it was slated for a, a release date of January 25th, 2019. And as I'm recording this, it's been roughly a couple of weeks since its release. Does it live up to the hype and expectations? Short answer. Yes. But firstly, I want to mention that the word remake is almost disingenuous. While the stuff that, you know, the stuff like the characters, the areas, the puzzles, and the story and such were all remade, but it's more suitable to basically call this game more of like along the lines of a reimagining. The original and the re remake are two different beasts in, them, in of themselves. The gameplay of itself is extremely satisfying. Enemies are, are a lot, and I mean a lot harder to kill in this game. I remember playing the one-shot demo on the PC a while back and having to unlo having to basically unload an entire clip of handgun ammo on a zombie to snuff it out. And keep in mind, I was shooting it in the head, and it ref just simply refused to stay down. So sometimes it is in your best interest to just flee from the zombies and conserve your ammunition for boss fights, unless if you literally have no choice if you're, let's say, cornered by a couple of zombies and a liquor. To the point where I've actually seen quite a few people complaining that the game is too hard to which I basically have to say get fucking good at the game fat people are actually complaining about the damage that the zombies take in this game it's like here's the thing it's called survival horror for a reason I mean what game did you expect this to be left for dead I won't be surprised that these are the same people who bitched about the controls in the earlier games for being too stiff and that's what survival horror is supposed to be. You're supposed to feel overwhelmed and helpless. It's not supposed to hold your hand and have you, and basically hand you ammo every second and after every enemy you kill, like in RE4, 5, and 6. And about the gameplay style, I was initially hoping that they were going to have a more fit, like, you know, have basically fixed camera angles, but I figured that they would just settle for a more, uh, third person over the shoulder style. Because people nowadays, the fucking casuals, hate that type of gameplay style. As sad as I was that they wouldn't return to that type of, that type of style, I was still very satisfied with the gameplay. The game itself showed me that true survival horror was back in full swing. Because I know that some people will disagree with me and say that RE7 did it, but I personally have to disagree. Not saying it's a bad game, it's, it's a really damn good game, but I just think that the Resident Evil 2 remake just did a little bit better. And the monsters in this game, they have never felt so lethal and dangerous before in a Resident Evil game, ever. No shit, if you took the Crimson Heads and the Hunters from the RE1 remake, like, you took like just a bunch of syringes and just took their DNA and injected them into like all the monsters in the original RE2, you will get some of the most pulse-pounding, terrifying results. And I mean it. Especially if you're playing this game on hardcore. Your ass cheeks will clench harder the second you enter a room with a liquor inside. Mr. X, I'm pretty sure you've heard a fuck ton about him already, other than the fact that he looks like if Nick Valentine from Fallout 4 decided to hit the gym and ingest steroids, or a ripped albino looking James Wood, or Dolph Lundgren, you basically get the fucking point. He'll pretty much follow you everywhere you go. You can't even have a shit in peace without him standing in front of the stall door and put busting it down. But as ominous as his presence is, 
There are a couple of rooms he won't follow you in, for example, sometimes, like basically the saves rooms, the clock tower room, the underground passage in the main police hall, and, but, but he still follows you everywhere he goes, except for the rooms that I mentioned. The IVs have been updated from the, their 1998 counterparts. Instead of looking like literal humanoid plant creatures, th these IVs look like actual humans that have been experimented by plant DNA. They actually look scary. I'm sorry, but the IVs in the original, they look incredibly stupid. But holy fuck, fuck the IVs in the remake. They are so freaking annoying because like if you don't have a sub weapon on you like a knife or a grenade you're you're basically fucked because there's they're just one hit kill enemies and i cannot stand one hit kill bullshit fuck these guys however there was one monster who didn't make the cut the giant spiders the giant spiders in the sewers ended up being replaced by the g mutants and if they end up grabbing you and if you don't have a sub weapon on you they, they'll end up spraying you with their poisonous fluids and when you're poisoned you cannot run you either have to track down a blue herb or use a blue herb in your inventory as your character will rapidly cough and slowly having their health deplete or sometimes they'll just end up straight up killing you by suffocating you the other monsters that end up getting getting uh, cut out from the remake were the giant moths and the crows and what i like too is that um claire's new redesign and I know some fans took issue with her sport not sporting her pinkish red vest and shorts. I did too at first, but after a while I started to really dig it because it aligns closer with her future appearances like in Code Veronica and Revelations 2. Hell, I even bought a Made in Heaven t-shirt based off of her new remake design. The only problem I have with it is that the fucking Made in Heaven logo is like barely visible. Unless if you actually, like, focus in on the back of her jacket. It's like Capcom forgot about it and added it in, like, the last minute. And another thing is, like, when you unlock her classic costume, she doesn't have the black t-shirt underneath the vest. And it just looks just... Like, who, who the fuck wears a wife beater underneath a vest? Like, what kind of fucking redneck shit is that? Other than that, I, I love her new redesign. By the way, I also like to mention if you've actually read the S.D. Perry Resident Evil novel based off the second book, it's called City of the Dead. And Claire kind of describes how she regrets going in, in shorts and a vest. Considering she's riding on a motorcycle and how cold it can be with all the wind rushing past you. And not only that, the game takes place in late September, so it's it kind of does get a little bit colder by that time. So her new redesign does make sense in a way. And I'm sorry, I know I'm going to piss off a lot of Jill Valentine fans, but Claire is ultimate wife material. Don't get me wrong, I like Jill. She may be an absolute badass, but Claire is a fucking Redfield. And also, uh, can somebody lend me the phone number of the mocap actress who played her because ah, hot damn is she fucking fine as fuck you know real talk she definitely deserves a tongue punch in the fart box anyway let's move on to leon shall we he's pretty much about the same as he was in the original a naive rookie cop whose first day on the job happens to start on the rise of a zombie apocalypse their appearances don't differ too much from the original. Leanne's outfit is a, like a darker navy bluish color, color, and it looks a little bit more like SWAT gear. The only problem I have with them is that he comes off a, just a little too naive and didn't take as much charge as he did in the original. But my biggest complaint is his voice actor. Half of the time he sounds like he's too soft spoken or like he doesn't know what the fuck his lines are. And is it just me or does he sound like Frankie Muniz from like Malcolm in the Middle or something? But I did like the bits toward the end where Semi passes Leon and Claire and Sherry ever so kindly giving them a friendly gesture where Leon blurts, well, 
He was friendly. That felt like a little bit of uh, Resident Evil 4 Leon seeping into his personality. All in all, he's basically the same as he was in the original, like I said. The same thing could be said about Ada, but the plotline where she is looking for his bo really looking for boyfriend, John, only to find out it's nothing but, but a ruse, just so she could gain more information off of Umbrella and acquire the G-Virus before the destruction of Raccoon City. Except now she's an undercover FBI agent hired to take down Umbrella. Her and Leon do share some pretty good chemistry, even though their relationship doesn't evolve at all for the rest of the series onward. And before I forget, there are three characters I want to mention that I feel been approved upon in the re in this reimagining. Two being minor characters, and the one being a main story character. You guys know what I mean by the two minor characters. That being Marvin and Kendo. Let's start off with my boy Marvin first. In the original, he basically was just there only to give exposition dumps only to have him point his gun at you and tell you, you to get the fuck out before he turns into a zombie. And when you meet him again in his zombie form, you really feel nothing. He just became another zombie just to kill. It was just like, oh no, he's a zombie. Well, that sucks, I guess. But here in the 2019 version, he is a little more fleshed out, especially depending on, on on whose A scenario you play through first. With Leon, he's a lot more harder on him and makes it clear to him that he's giving and giving orders. Even going as so far as to point his gun at him before the two part ways, after Leon doesn't listen to him the first time. But with Claire, he's a lot more softer on her, mainly due to the fact that he probably has a deep admiration for her brother Chris. When you meet up with him again in his zombified form, it's hard to have the nerve to kill him. It's optional to kill him, but I find myself killing him anyway because it's better being actually dead than being a zombie. Seriously, props to the mocap actor and the voice actor for making me feel for this otherwise minor character. Now, what they did to Robert Kendo with this version... Holy fucking shit. I did not expect to see such a 180 done on a minor character ever in a video game. I didn't have a clue that Capcom would make him so sympathetic. Because in the original, he was just an incompetent fool who let his guard down easily and ended up being eviscerated by zombies. But here, Capcom made him to a family man with an affected daughter. I don't have to explain it myself. This cutscene describes it better than I ever can. I'm not gonna hurt you. I said don't move. I'm just passing through. I'm gonna ask you to lower that weapon. I tell you what, you gotta turn around and go right back out the way you came in. I think your daughter needs help, sir. Don't tell me how to deal with my daughter. Drop it. No, wait. Step aside. We need to terminate her before she turns. Terminate. Fucking daughter. Ada. Just let them be. Emma? Sweetheart, I told you to stay put. Daddy. Daddy's here. Okay. Those fucking things outside. they did to us you're a cop you're supposed to know something how did this happen huh she was a sweet little angel mommy I'm sleeping honey okay and I'm gonna Put you to bed too, okay? Emma. Just go. Just give us some privacy. It's one thing to keep the truth from me, but why him? I 
I mean, shit. It's insane how feels heavy this game is. I mean, it's a lot better than... But don't you worry, girly. You'll be safe in here. I'm keeping a close eye on things. Yeah. This also goes to show how much the Raccoon City incident affected so much, so many of the residents there. Now on to William Birkin. He's basically about as the same as he was in the original. And the reason why I said he was an improvement in this game was because he was voiced by Frank freaking West. I've covered wars, you know. It's great to see that TJ Rotolo is still getting work. And not to mention, he's played Birkin in the Umbrella Chronicles and the Dark Side Chronicles. Not only that, when Hunk and his team catch up with him and ha while he's hastily trying to retrieve the G-Virus, he's panicking because he knows that Umbrella's gonna show up at any moment to steal his virus that he was so passionate about. And a little while later, when he wakes up from being shot and when he discovers the G-Virus has been stolen from him, he is furious. In the original, he is just so smug and was confident enough that he w that Umbrella wasn't going to take it from him. It's sheer perfection, my precious G-Virus. No one will ever take you away from me. There he is. So you finally come. Doctor, we're here to collect the G-Virus sample. Sorry, but I won't just hand over my life's work. You might hit the sample. I mean, sure, you could say that he was going on some sort of enormous ego trip and genuinely thought that he was untouchable, but I feel like anybody's normal reaction about, about a bunch of armed soldiers working for a secret organization was coming to steal their hard work. They would panic too. I feel like I don't have to go into too much de detail about Sherry because she's basically like how she was in the original. I figured I'd talk about Annette instead. She's also another character I feel was improved upon much more in the remake than she was in the original. God, how many times do I have to say fucking original in this review? Original, original, original. Jesus fucking Christ. Anyway, because in the original, it seems like Annette, all Annette really cared about was proving to the world how great of a scientist as her husband was. I mean, she did show some sort of concern for her daughter, but it was mostly overshadowed by her obsession with her work. Remake, it, ki it kinda comes across as like that, but, but it's only until the end of the sewer level when she finally snaps out of it when Claire informs her that her daughter has been infected by with the G, G virus. And instead of trying to prove to the world that her husband is like the greatest scientist in the world, she's hell bent on preventing the G virus being spread almost across the world, essentially, and taking out William and Ada too, because Ada is trying to steal the G virus from her to basically sell it. But not all the character changes are good though. Perhaps the biggest downgrade of any of the characters is Chief Irons. Oh my god, what the fuck did they do to Irons in this game? You remember how in the original when Claire walked into his office and he had the mayor's daughter's bloody corpse on his desk? He attempted to do his best at hiding of what he was really gonna do. I mean, not that you would believe him, because there were only like, what, two people in the room? And all that blood pouring out of her chest did, did, didn't just come out of nowhere. It's like, what, did your stuffed tiger fucking come out and bite her or some shit? But with like, with some serial killers, they have a certain charm about them, and they, uh, and which allows them to get away with a lot of shit sometimes. It's only like the next time you see him in the sewers is like when he's completely losing his shit. In the remake, however, j it just completely doesn't exist. In the remake, he's about as subtle as Dan Slott trying to hide his weird fetish with Doc Ock. Because in the original, he gives a much better impression on how he got the job as a police officer. I'm sorry, I mean police chief. But in the remake, Irons is a scumbag the second he appears on screen. No subtlety, it's just way too obvious. And every fucking sentence that this fat blubbering retard says makes you want to throat punch him. On the ground, hands behind your head. Don't worry, Sherry. It'll be all over soon. You are gonna be so fucking sorry! Go, You 
stupid bitch, that's a dead end! It's all over now! Doors locked! Show yourself! Now! Fuck! Birds! Capcom some DLC that I feel like I should touch upon firstly the costumes They're fine. I guess really the only standout being Eliza Walker the noir suits are pretty dope The Arkley sheriff suit Leon has looks Looks so fucking stupid. I'm gonna be honest right now. I get it It's supposed to be a reference to Rick Grimes from Walking Dead, but I don't watch The Walking Dead The show hasn't been fucking good since the first season. The comics are much better than an overhyped piece of shit TV show If you like Walking Dead great, please don't take it take my shit talking about the show as me shaming people for liking it The military suit Claire has is fine. I mean, I don't mind it too much. It looks all right Recently, they did release skins of their original PlayStation 1 models, which is pretty sweet. But where the fuck are the unlockable costumes from the original game? Like, are they gonna be released as DLC or something? They have the unlockable guns for each character in their B campaigns, but not their outfits. Leon's gun that he holds sideways makes him look like a fucking idiot, without knowing the context of it essentially being just a joke that the devs put in in the original. Hell, they didn't even bother putting in the unlockable costumes from the Nintendo 64 version. I mean, what the hell, Capcom put in every single costume that a Rebecca has worn in the Resident Evil series in the remastered version of Resident Evil Zero. I mean, sure, it was paid DLC, but it was still pretty sweet nonetheless. The DLC pistols like Wesker's Samurai Edge does dick, and it does the same amount of damage as Leanne's Matilda or Claire's snub Nose revolver. There are also Krill... Krill? God fucking damn it, I cannot speak today. Chris and Jill's handguns that you get by pre-ordering the game, but they're the exact same as Wesker's handgun, other than the fact that they look slightly different from each other. And they also added the original soundtrack as DLC, and out of my eight playthroughs, I've used the remakes soundtrack, like, soundtrack, like, two times, and the original I used, like, <laughs> The rest. The remake soundtrack's pretty great, but I can't find myself memorizing any of them. That probably has to do with the fact that I mostly use the original soundtrack. So that's entirely my fault. And the original soundtrack fits well with the game. It doesn't feel dated, none of that. And lastly, there's the Ghost Survivors. They're basically like the mercenaries, but focusing on the minor characters in what-if type scenarios. Minor characters such as Kendo, the mayor's daughter, and one of the Umbrella Soldiers that ended up getting slaughtered by William Birkin. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's the soldier who pulled the f pulled the trigger first on Birkin when they went to go retrieve the G-Virus. But but that's not all. There's a fourth and unlockable one that you can, that you can get when you beat the other uh, scenarios. The unlockable one focusing on Daniel Cortini, the sheriff you end up meeting in the game, who ends up getting his throat torn out in the beginning, in the gas station part. And like, I don't know how it happened, but I managed to somehow beat it on my third attempt. And it's hard as fuck. Anyways, this all boils down to one burning question. Is this remake, aka reimagining, better than the original? Yes, and no. Oh shit, I forgot to mention Ben. Whoops. I mean, he's there, so... But his death was pretty fucking kick-ass, though. <laughs> While I love what a lot of this game did, there were a couple of things that bothered me. Like the second Birkin fight being kind of bullshit at times when you first play through it, and the A and B scenarios feeling no different from each other other than the beginning and item placement, and how both scenarios like end up having continuity errors up the ass like they did in the original, and like what I said about irons being a massive downgrade. But what this game excelled at, it excelled at it very well. And I know that this remake is most likely gonna take the original's place in the canon, much like the Resident Evil 1 remake on the GameCube did, but I want to wait until the Resident Evil 3 remake comes out to make that kind of judgment. Despite all those nitpicks and problems, 
This is a damn near perfect reimagining of a classic game in the survival horror genre. And like I said, I've replayed through it like eight times, and each playthrough has never gotten old for me. Hell, I went out of my way to get the S plus rank on hardcore on Claire's campaign. It nearly cost me a brain aneurysm and a broken controller, but I managed to keep pushing along and get every single trophy. I still have yet to get an S plus rank on Leanne's hardcore campaign, but I'm getting there. And since Capcom announced that they are re going to do a remake of Resident Evil 3, I hope they consider re a remake of Code Veronica and Outbreak Files 1 and 2. Especially Outbreak, considering the overwhelming popularity of online gaming nowadays. And it's a shame that it wasn't on the Xbox, because I think it would have fared a lot better than being played on the PlayStation 2's online, which fucking sucked. And despite all my problems with it and my nitpicks, I think this game still gets a, a rare 10 out of 10. It's absolutely worth full price. I'm even considering double dipping and purchasing the PC version for the mods that have been seeping out online recently. And don't forget, children, to keep them popsicles cold and like this video and subscribe to Vash the Ashtray's channel. Herbert, would you get the fuck out of here? This is your boy Vash the Ashtray signing out and be excellent to each other. Hey, what about me? I'm a part of this channel too, you know. <sighs> Jesus fucking Christ.